And let's move on to the AFC South. Uh, we got to start with the Jaguars, right? Big yeah, they team, are heavy. Ton of money. They have spent some money. I have some mixed feelings about this. I would love okay. to hear your thoughts. Just uh, a basic rundown. We're looking at the graphic right now. Where, what do you see here that that pops out to you? Uh, I think I think Malcolm Brown is a solid move. I think they get a, a starter in that you know in the defensive trenches. Shaq Griffin is a cornerback one technically that can fit alongside um, um, C.J. Henderson, who had a really promising um, rookie campaign going. Cam Robinson, franchise tag. I think he's a staple piece that you got to have at your offensive line. Carlos Hyde doesn't really do nothing for me. Uh, Rayshon Jenkins doesn't do anything for me. Rudy Ford is formidable in places that they play him because he's been there before. Yep. And Jamal Agnew, I actually like at the wide receiver spot. And you're landing Trevor Lawrence. So in my head, I'm putting him up there as well. Yep. I don't think they lost a lot. These aren't the flashy moves that you want to see whenever you're a top three team in the, in the cap. Yeah. But they had... Mini moves. And then look, there's you look at draft needs. It's dealer's choice for a reason, right? They need a lot of help in a lot of places. Uh, looks like, I mean, you. I always talk about how you look at the free agency moves, especially like some of the not big moves, and that tells you what they're looking at, right? D-tackle. The defensive line is clearly a big importance to the Jaguars franchise yes. right now. They grabbed a bunch of guys, traded for a Malcolm Brown, uh, you know, went out and got some of these dudes. And, and you know, Roy Robertson Harris, you know, this is a guy who, who was hurt last year but but has some talent. And I think he he could come on and be like he could start for this team next year. And he got a, a very good deal. The thing that kills me is Shaquille Griffin, Shaq Griffin getting top cornerback he money in this concept. He got big boy money, and I don't we don't have the the list right here. It doesn't matter. the 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 money is so messed. I used to care so much about how much these guys got yeah. paid and everything. And it's like the contracts get changed so quickly, and it's like it doesn't really matter until it matters. You know what I mean? Uh, so I, I but I look at this particular signing, and I'm like, if you were going to spend that much money, why wouldn't you go get William Jackson? William Jackson is better than Griffin. I'm sorry, like I don't. It's it's not a question. And, I, and maybe people will will shout out from the comments and let me know if you disagree. That's fine. Maybe I'm wrong on this, but I I would be surprised if in a year every Jaguars fan isn't saying, "Man, we paid Griffin more than William Jackson got paid, and William Jackson is doing a whole hell of a lot better." I look at Griffin as a scheme fit in their Seahawks a scheme, and it works for him. He was fine, but he was a wider he was a cornerback too playing cornerback one on the Seahawks and struggling like fans of, of uh, the Seahawks don't like Griffin. They're not missing him at all. And now he's getting cornerback one money to go to the Jaguars. I, I have an issue with that signing. I get it. I do think they address the need mm -hmm. and you know, they're definitely evaluating their talent as they do in their own place. And I don't think that he's going to be asked to be the true number one. I think CJ Henderson stepped up a lot last year and was really able in, you know, in a hard division too. Yeah. I, I think he was able to do formidable Shaq Griffin, if he's if he's a two, does that do it for you? But why pay him like a one? I I, I get like even if he's not going to be the one on the team, why pay him? I like get a that, one? but so theoretically, William Jackson is just not interested from the get go. That's that's what I'm saying in my head because I I value him better than Shaq Griffin as well. So maybe they just had that door closed on him. If you miss out on Shaq Griffin, what do you do? You you still okay. you have a See, major that's a good you have a major need. That's a good I point. think if you have the money to spend and you have to do it. I think now you're able to look because we have our draft needs as a dealer's choice because Jacksonville has so many different needs across the board. I think, yes, they will still need cornerback, of course, okay. but you can address some of those earlier needs elsewhere and maybe get some true playmakers early on. Bro, see, this is why I love doing the pod with you. You you defend things so well when I overreact <laughs> I think, I, to shit like that. No, you're I, absolutely I think, right. You're, that's a, a good way I think to put it. He's a good starter. Yeah. It is a depth move. You overpaid them. Yeah. Yes. Okay. They, they definitely. Did. I think that's a, a perfect way to say. It. I, I liked the Marvin Jones move. I, I was surprised he got as much as he got. But Marvin Jones is a good wide receiver too. And and being uh, being the compliment to a, a, DJ a, a DJ Shark uh, yeah, at, at, a, at a wide receiver one, I have no problem with that at all. Gives Trevor Lawrence some weapons. Again, it's dealer's choice for a reason. There's going to be some issues. This team isn't going to be great next year, but. I mean, hopefully going in the right direction. Hopefully you got some. My big thing with this is, like, who is the foundational piece you got in free agency? Is it Malcolm Brown? Is it, is it you know, it, it Cam Robinson franchise tag? So you can't say that's your foundational piece. Is I, it I get Griffin? what you're saying. You know what I mean? You have that, you're one, two, and three in the cap. Yeah. You know, those teams are supposed to be like, hey, we got so-and-so. We mm -hmm. got this dude. We got a, a top five dog in the free mm -hmm. agency class. You didn't. You got a lot of guys that fit into that 
you know, 15 to 30 yeah. range, I think. I think they plugged some holes for next year, but I can see a lot of these guys being cut next year. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so that's that's why I'm a little bit low on it, and I'm, I'm sorry, Jaguars fans. I'm not trying to shit on your team. I, I'm very excited for the Jaguars this year. I think they already had a, a good bit of young talent that wasn't utilized in the last regime, and I think it can be with, you know, a Trevor Lawrence coming in and, you know, with, to, to shore that up. I, I'm excited about that aspect of it. And really, I mean, look, you lost Josh Oliver, not a, nothing. Chris Thompson's were being replaced by Carlos Hyde. I mean, okay, nothing, no, like no, no news Connelly there. Really Chris Connolly. They they also lost mm-hmm. D, DJ or DD Westbrook, which I didn't put on there because he was hurt most last year anyway. So so you know you're not losing a lot of pieces. You're adding some talent. Uh, where would you go with uh, their second first round pick? In yeah, the that's show? what I was about to ask yeah. you. Uh, so Trevor Lawrence is an instant. Mm-hmm. Uh, who's who's second? Do they have again? They got the they got the Rams. They have the Rams. So, Rams did make the playoffs, so they're probably at like. 20, 22, 23. I'm somewhere in that ballpark. Yeah. Um, man, that is so tough. I would say offensive line based for Trevor. Yeah, I like. Uh, and, there, there, there's some. Deep there's not line elite, class. elite talent early on at the guard. I'm looking primarily interior offensive line, okay. the guard center position, mm-hmm. but it is deep there. You can find a starter in those rounds, and I think it's important. It's a them. good year to need offensive line, and I mean, it, you don't they have always a say that Taylor either. On the outside at tackle, who I think is. Maybe going to find his roots and hopefully, hopefully. get going. And you, you have a franchise Cam tag, Cam Robinson. So yep. you're set tentatively there. Mm-hmm. Go help out that interior because we saw what happened with Joe Burrow. Mm-hmm. And teams need to understand when you invest in a guy that is that highly touted, Trevor Lawrence is five times the Burrow hype that we have going into this. Yeah. Take care of the man. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. And look, you talk about a rebuild, go, go defensive line, go offensive line first year. Just load up on the interior because that's that's the way you want it. That's way, the way every good rebuild starts. I mean, you, you don't start from the skill positions and work in. You start from the 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 trenches and it's work out. I mean, it's yeah, yeah, you because yeah. I mean, there's not a lot of bad teams with a good offensive line. That's that's my favorite quote. So I absolutely agree with you. Go go shore up offensive line with. I mean, shit, you could use your next three picks on offensive line, and I wouldn't even complain about it. I really wouldn't. Um, I'm sure a lot of uh, I'm sure a lot of Rams or Jags fans would, but that's okay. We're gonna move on to the uh, to the Colts. Let's do Colts next here, and not a big, not a lot of movement here. I mean, we're probably not gonna spend a whole lot of time on the Colts. We've known about the Carson Wentz thing for a while and that's like we're have this graphic up right now that's that was their big addition i mean honestly and i know it wasn't free agent but that's the big addition coming into the 2021 season anything you want to say about this uh costanza retired did he not? yes it, he did it was yes. it was a surprising retire you have braden but, smith who you could bump out to that left side he's but he's played phenomenally at mm-hmm. right tackle though so i don't know what you want to do there they need to dr- address that early mm-hmm. these the Colts are now, since all these other moves have happened, because they've been so quiet in free agency, they're a top five uh, cap team. They're yep. a very good roster to be a top five cap team, and we haven't seen the moves yet. Um, they made some pushes for some defensive linemen early on. They kind of hit, you know, mm-hmm. uh, swing and a miss on a few of those guys. So quiet overall. Still a good roster. I don't think they're done yet. Yeah, and I absolutely agree. And look, we're recording this as of uh, Thursday night. If something changes in like before this video comes out, I up to like the last second, I'll edit this graphic and maybe it says something on your screen that we're not talking about. It's because we edited it after recording this video. Yeah. So I'll just put that out there. Let's move over to draft needs. Um, I, I do think they got to replace Anthony Casanzo. This is a good point of them moving moving uh, what's his name to tackle. I like that idea. I still think you know this this team runs through the the tackle position or go runs through the offensive line in general so the the tackle position is going to have to be attacked and hey we, we just mentioned it. Great, great year to need a tackle. I mean, uh, so I like that. Where, where else would you go in the draft? Yeah, I, I am led to believe that they're going to have to target the wide receiver position just depending on what happens with T.Y. Hilton. So T.Y. is a stud still to me in my eyes. Okay. We, I, See, we disagree on that. I'll put that there. Uh, okay, stud, too broad of a term. Um, Kenny Galladay would be an instant upgrade from a T.Y. Hilton. I don't want to put him on I think, that. I think Juju would be an upgrade too, and I'm not huge on Juju either. Okay, wow. Um, yeah. I don't think Phillip Rivers brought the most out of what a T.Y. Hilton could do. So I think he's going to be slept on in this in this regard. I still would like to have a T.Y. Hilton on the team. Zach Pascal was given the role last year. We had a, we saw a lot of wide receivers that were supposed to step up and yeah. just weren't able to step up, mm-hmm. not to mention uh, Michael Pittman Jr. I think he might be the one to actually really solidify himself in that role. Yeah. Yes. So you got to address wide receiver and possibly cornerback. Yeah, and, and you know, you Paris Campbell is another one. He got hurt really on, early on in the year. I still believe in him. So yeah. I think he's going to come back. Look, I, and I don't, you, you always make fun of me. The second a guy turns 30, I, I write him off. You make fun of me all the time, and maybe that's what <laughs> that's I'm doing what with the T.Y. Hilton here. But I, I feel like we've seen the decline. There, I think there's a reason we're not hearing 
a whole lot on him in the free agent market. We got Marlon Mack coming back, so it makes sense. Like, okay, they brought Ma back Marlon Mack over for a pretty team-friendly deal. They could bring back T.Y. Hilton, too, and I wouldn't, like, sit here and say I hate it. I do think they still need an upgrade. Good year. I mean, honestly, all their needs, it's a good year to need all of those. Maybe not corner. Corner kind of falls off after the top three, in my opinion. But other than that, like, I mean, it's a they, they could be a sneaky, sneaky playoff team. A sneaky, like, very good playoff even, team. I don't even think it's sneaky. I yeah. think if we're able to see a revitalized and maybe rejuvenated Carson Wentz, mm -hmm. he could propel them. Yeah. They, they made the playoffs last year, and they were some – bogus calls away, you know, because they had some bogus calls going in their favor. It shouldn't have been that close with Buffalo. Gotcha. But technically some bogus calls away from advancing to the next round of the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And from there, who knows? I was wondering which way you're going with that with bogus well, calls. I, I got it, you. Buffalo <laughs> was getting hosed that game. They did. Because it shouldn't I, have been as close as what it was. We watched that together. I can totally agree. Technically a few calls away from somehow pulling out a dub yeah. in the playoffs. What's the next step? Yeah. And listen, I mean, they 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 did the best they could with a Philip Rivers who was on, their last, on his last leg. Man, I, I still believe in the talent of a Carson Wentz. I think, you know, a, a scenery change could do wonders for him. We'll see what happens. I think you're, I'm getting into the point where, like, it might just be a character issue with Car Carson Wentz, and that seems to be something that we've heard a lot about. Like, people don't like him as a person. Maybe. So so maybe that's an issue. We'll see what happens. I'm excited to see what happens with the Colts. Let's move on here. Uh, let's move on to the Tennessee Titans. And uh, Tennessee Titans fans are not going to like this graphic at all. Uh uh oh, I am so sorry, guys. I mean, not a lot of additions. You got the big name in Bud Dupree. A lot of guys not on that team anymore. It's uh, it's an unfortunate one. I'm going to light into them. Yeah. Do I'm it. sorry because I think that they were in a spot in a in a division that still has some teams falling down with the, the fall of Deshaun Watson and mm -hmm. the Texans. We have yet to see the up-and-coming Jaguars yet, and you have a Colts team that's transitioning to a quarterback. Yes, I just talked up and gassed up Carson Wentz. There is a good chance that it may not happen. So, Titans fans, for once in a long time, you are the one constant in that division that could take it and run with it because we see so many different winners pop in and out. Colts one year, Texans one year, Titans the next, back and forth, all these 9-7, and 8-8 eight and eight bad years. Go out there, re-sign your guys, keep the band together, and just run – uh, Derrick Henry 2K to the ground and take it to the playoffs. Your defense got horrible. It got was worse. it was bad got last year. It was bad last year. Yes, you signed Bud Dupree. I am really high on Bud Dupree. I think it is really good. I am too. But uh, 16 million, I believe. It's a lot. Yeah, it is a lot for a guy who got hurt in Week 12. He is not going to be a contributor until midseason next year. Even if he's on the field, yeah. he is not going to be the same guy. He's going to need a little bit of time. It's guys. the secondary, man. Yeah, it's the secondary. I mean, just, you, you lose uh, Adore Jackson, name. you lose Malcolm Butler, you lose Kenny Vaccaro. Uh, Kenny Vaccaro, I felt like, was a great system safety for what he was able to do for the Titans. Yeah, too. It's sad good. to see that they couldn't bring him back for a hometown discount kind of mm -hmm. deal. I understand why you cut Malcolm Butler. It's strictly saving dollars. I didn't have a problem with that. Adore Jackson, though, was a guy. Yes. You, you, that was a, you're, that you're was a dollar a saver, of, too. I yeah, mean, I, mean I understand the dollar saving things, yeah. but you're pissed off by some of the ways that he plays. He didn't he didn't amount to that 18th overall pick like you did, Titans. We, we can admit that. But you have to address a need and understand that you still have a need at that position. What are they going to do? My, the issue for me is what where are you what like what are you adding like i i don't i don't they're get, not like yeah so it's like i i, I don't you were the divisions up in the air not, not up in the yours to take because it's yeah. already yours so run with it yeah so you lose gianu you lose your Corey davis you lose adam humphreys as well so who's your yeah. number two I don't know. Exactly. I don't know who the number two is. And, and look, Johnny Smith, the tight end, they, they got some use out of Ferkshire, who they did bring back. Uh, I may, maybe the tight end position is going to be okay. And Delaney Walker's uh, returning. Yeah, and, and I'm not going to I'm not gonna sit here and hate him for moving on from Johnny. He got a big payday, a tight end who was good but not great for the Titans. Okay, whatever. But, like, you, you lose all of these contributors on your defense and you bring in one guy on the defensive line to make up for all of it? I'm sorry, I didn't come into the season saying, like, the defensive end is on draft needs, and I think it's a need for the Titans. I didn't think it was the biggest need. It certainly wasn't a bigger need than what cornerback is now. Uh, I, I don't, yeah, I don't get it. You you move on from a Dennis Kelly who, he has some injury concerns. He he has, like, a, a serious medical issue that I heard him talking about on our podcast once uh, that maybe, maybe there was some issue there. Maybe that had something to do with the cut. But you already totally whiffed on an Isaiah Wilson on yeah. your first-round pick last year, which I, I'm not going to sit here and blame the Titans. They, they took a shot 
out in the guy they believed could be a stud tackle and uh, off the field issues really brought him to, they had to trade him to the Dolphins. So it you, is what it is that, there. You see that work? I mean, look at the Titans with Jeffrey Simmons. You did yeah. the same exact thing. And it worked out. Home run. So, so like, I'm not, I'm not shitting on him for that. They've drafted fairly well overall uh, that 2017, the 2017 draft doesn't look very good anymore, but overall they've drafted fairly well, but you just lost so many guys. You created so many needs that you need to uh, fill up with and in, in the draft. And it's not like they have a ton of draft capital. They they have the picks they're supposed to have, but I mean, yeah, I, I don't get this. I, I don't, I don't understand well, the thought process. And then going back to like what they have on the secondary that's left right now, Christian Fulton was a healthy scratch. A lot of yeah. the games last year. I don't know whether Maybe that was comes because back. you like your depth or yeah. what you what you thought he was going to do in there, but he's going to have to step up in a big way. Big and time. then whoever they draft this year is going to be an instant step up and play kind of guy because you have no other choice right now. Yeah. And, and I, I'm going to play devil's advocate for a second for Titans fans. Okay, we don't know we don't know what the practices look like. Maybe maybe Fulton is the dude and they believe in him. And they're like, we're not going to pay Malcolm Butler and Dory Jackson to do what we know Christian uh, Fulton can do better. Maybe that's what they're thinking. Maybe they like their depth at the tackle position. We don't we don't know what these tackles look like. Like we don't we don't know what their their backup guard is looking like right now. We don't know. So so maybe maybe they feel confident in that. They don't even feel like they have to address it. Dennis Kelly. Maybe they feel like they're getting younger and better at that position. I don't know. I don't. I can't honestly tell you who their fourth wide receiver is or who their fifth wide receiver is. And I should know that. We're talking about the Titans right now, so I'm sorry for for my ignorance to every to Titans fans who probably know that are watching this. But maybe you believe in those guys. I don't know. I to me, it looks like you made a lot of uh, holes for yourself, but. The Titans might have a plan. We have trusted this organization, and they have brought them in the right direction so far. I hope that they know what they're. I, I think they know what they're doing. I hope that their their plan works out the way they want it to. I'll put yeah, it that th- way. This isn't going to sink the ship. The Tennessee Titans are still a playoff caliber team. I was just prepped for them to really revamp this thing. Yeah. I, I looked at them in Buffalo, not in the way that they built their team the same, but in the same of. They can make a couple the next pieces step. away. Yeah, going from divisional championship round to a legitimate, if they land the yeah. right moves, a legit Super Bowl champion. Yeah. They they have that potential, and I think they made it harder on themselves. By yeah, making they did. Moves. And I get that some of the cuts were were to save money. Adam Humphreys was an early cut because they knew he, he, he wasn't worth it. Uh, Vinny Vaccaro got some, a good payday, but safety is an easy position to to replace. So I get it, and and I love Vinny Vaccaro or Kenny Vaccaro. I'm not trying to shit on him at all, but safety in general in the NFL is a fairly easy position to to replace place it just is um you know so i i don't know man i i i'm hopeful i'm, I'm hopeful this doesn't sink the ship to me the AFC, the afc and conference in general has been so competitive i mean the jaguars got a lot better the the colts got a lot better you're not gonna have to worry about the texans you're good there so so can you win their division maybe May, maybe I think, I think they can but i just wanted to see them prep. if they can't i mean you're gonna be are you gonna be competing with the dolphins like the likes of the dolphins who should be taking another step this year are you gonna be competing with you know the patriots are you and i'm trying to i'm going like a tear down like on purpose right i'm asking like are, are you gonna be competing with the browns and the steelers like I, I don't i don't know where they're gonna be compared to all the rest of the teams are they gonna be able to make the playoffs next year i don't know i think it's a question mark and, and and I hate feeling that way at this point in the season for a team that I mean I love the way they play football I like watching the Titans every week they're a fun team to watch I think, I think they're in yeah you think they're in good I'm glad you, I'm glad somebody does and again I, I just I put all that out there anything else you want to say about the Titans um, we see the draft needs we can I I think that you got to go cornerback if if uh, one of yes, the top cool. three are there uh, you, you could easily go tackle it's a good year to need tackle as we've said a bunch of times uh, and it's a good year to need wide receiver that is another you know light at the end of the tunnel. You can get a wide receiver two in the second round, and he can pl- he can produce your week one, your year one. So so you know, hopefully hopefully they're able to do that and, and replace some of these weapons that you lost. And I think that's the best way to put it. Yeah. All right, we'll move on uh, to the last team we got to talk about in this division, the Texans. Um, man, it's got to be a dealer's tough, choice, right? Tough to be a Texan. I haven't seen your graphic yeah. yet. But it's a dealer's <laughs> yeah, choice. Yeah, we put the graphic up right now. I'll let you run with it. What are you thinking with the Texans? Yeah, um, you haven't hit the floor yet. You will You will start to see the bottom after you figure out what you want to do with Deshaun. So if you're able to salvage that from all the news coming out is that Deshaun definitely wants out no matter what, and there's no way around that. He's never playing again for the Texans. And if that's the case, you need to get your assets while you can, and you need to start seeing the path that you want to take. I, I don't think they can trade him right now. With all no, the stuff no, going on, I don't not, think they can trade the outside, Well, because, I mean, you're getting pennies to the dollar at that rate. Yeah, you know, they, they would get, team acquiring they could have gotten three plus, three first round, they could have gotten a haul last week, and this week I don't know what they could get for him right now. I don't know if the Dolphins would realistically trade the third pick overall for a guy they don't know if he's going to be 
convicted of sexual harassment in a couple of years. And if something uh, like that happens, yeah. it's it's damning your career. It's, it's yeah, and it's dam- and it's a putting a, a schmirk on the organization. Exactly. So it's like I, I don't know if the Dolphins would be w- willing to make that trade right this second, and I don't I don't know what the Texans could get for him. And this is all speculation. Maybe I don't know. So yeah, it's it's not looking good for the Texans. <laughs> they they lost a lot of good cap hits though. They were able to you know JJ Watt. It was time. It was just it was just time for that marriage. It was a good run while it lasted. Mm-hmm. But you have no need for him either right now. So <laughs> let him move on. Duke Johnson was getting way overpaid at running mm-hmm. back position. Good to see him go. Uh, McKinney was another guy getting overpaid, and you were able to kind of ship him out and bring it in. Marcus Cannon, I think, is an underrated move for them. Mm-hmm. I think he is a good tackle. I think you're able to play him and Laramie Tunzel. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's it's so hard to spin this thing in a positive manner because yeah. there's so many different ways that you got to go. But you at least, going forward, have... Picks. Yeah. I, I, well, I'm not assuming this year. Deshaun. Not this year. I'm, I'm just assuming you're able to get get Deshaun okay. for a good. I get. Haul. So I I can spend it. I can say, look. The the Deshaun Watson issue is the big thing. And it's like, man, what are you going to do at the quarterback position now? Is Tyra Taylor your starter? I will say this. You, you you were able to trade for a Shaq Lawson, and you were able to send out. Uh, but I think that trade worked for both teams, right? Yeah. It worked for the Dolphins, and it worked for the Texans. They Shaq Lawson was a need, like the defensive end was a need. They replaced that good. Terrence Mitchell, you got a good cornerback too at a good price, solid. You got uh, Malik Collins, a good D tackle. I'm not saying he's an all star, but he's he, he, he he's a you need starters, right? Yeah, now. yeah, and they're getting they got starters. Marcus Cannon was a very good trade, and honestly, the Texans are gonna have to make more trades, especially. Especially like player to, for player trades yes. because they don't have a lot of assets and you don't want to give up draft picks. But that's the best way you can get players to come into your organization. Trade for them because they don't have a choice. <laughs> um, yeah. It is what it is. But I mean, that's a, you're not getting the the top end free agents because I guarantee you any free agent that's offered equal deals from one team to another, you're not going to the Texans train right, right now. Well, if they, you're if you're a free agent making your round, decision, they don't have a pick to the third round. Yeah, Tyrod Taylor went because he thinks he's going to be a starter, and he, he probably believe he probably will be uh, because he, I don't know what's going to happen with Sean Watson. You got Mark Ingram, who you know I get it, I, you understand why he was he was uh, let go by the yeah, just, Ravens, just, just but German. I think he's an upgrade over Duke Johnson. I really do. I like so, and he's cheaper. So I, I like in a vacuum. I actually like a lot of the moves they've made. I just am not excited about the Texans in general because of we haven't we on the floor yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, and Nick Martin's a huge hit, and I don't know how they're going to replace that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, especially when you're looking at one of the only things that you do have that is mildly enticing mm-hmm. is a well built line. And I know I don't think it's I don't think it's complete ass. Yep. In some ways that it is. Laramie Tunzel is one of the best promising tackles out there. Nick Martin was an absolute hit. And then add in a Marcus Cannon if yeah. they could have held on to Nick Martin. I mean, you, you have three out of five solid. Yeah, yeah well, and you, you have a pass uh, organization that was doing everything they could to shore up the offensive line to make a push. Now well, you're not at hit. Now, yeah, now, now, now you're coming into it and it's like, okay, your offensive line has some promising pieces. The rest of your team just sucks. So, I mean, it is what it is. Um, guys, first I'm, round pick next year. Yeah, first round pick next year, guys. Oh, if you're first text- overall pick, sorry. First overall pick. Oh, yeah. I was just saying, hey, they have a first-round pick next year. <laughs> that's true, too. Sorry, Texas fans. Hey, but hey, look, we never know what that first-round pick could be. I mean, it, that's assets. Even if you if you get to keep Deshaun Watson, or to, if you can talk him into coming back, that could be uh, uh, multiple picks in the future. And if not, hey, you, you could have a quarterback of the future. And if you are a Texans fan right now, at least take solace in the fact that teams are never terrible for very long in the NFL. I mean, honestly, like, right? I mean, that's fair to say. Dolphins are on the come up. the The Browns are on the come up. All I these know, but I'm the Bills are on the come up. I mean, uh, the Bills bad. have already come up. They've, I know, but they they were bad for so long. There were so many teams that have been historically bad. At the end of the day, the goal is Lombardi's. Yeah, historically bad teams have been historically bad. Okay, we well, haven't I'm seen just Cleveland. Saying. We haven't seen Cincinnati back in a while. Detroit's been struggling for years. Can't get off the I ground. don't think they're in that situation, but they might be. Who knows? I don't know. I, I mean, you, a, a you D, might be a right. Detroit is a sore thumb. They stand out on a, on many different levels. But I'm just saying, overall, it just depends on what you consider success. I, I'm trying to speak to the uh, to the Texans fans of the world and, and not, tell them it's going to be okay. They're not. They're, um, they're not out there. All right. We just lost. There's not going to be. We're not going to have one subscriber from a Texans fan. Thanks a lot, bro. I, leave it in the comments, please. <laughs> I'm sorry. And if you are a Texans fan, I want to shake your hand. I commend you for sticking through these hey, bad moves. If you're a Texans fan, comment on this video and uh, we will we will feature the comment and we will apologize to you personally on the next podcast. That's a deal. That's and I also deal. double down and say and every Texans fan, if you were able to somehow prove to me that you were a Texans fan, not just spam, 
I will do a shot for every single one of you. On on the pod? Texans Nation, come out. Make come me pay out. for it. Oh, hell yeah. Make me pay for it. Hell yeah. Come come to the Between the Pylons podcast. Comment down below. Show that you're a fan. And we have a bunch of shots for good old Jacob Waters. There's not more than 10, right? <laughs> We're going to so. find out. I think they lost that with Diaz. <laughs>